So it's only taken a year for the best Apollo Lake notebook to come out and perhaps the best budget laptop there is for under 250 US. This is the Techlast F7. Now it's using the Apollo Lake N3450, that's a Sauron processor with four cores. It's soon to be replaced. It's the end of the line for this CPU. It's gonna be replaced by the Gemini Lake, the N4100. That'll be coming out in devices within the next month or two. But until then, this really is a fantastic laptop. So it's got a very similar spec to the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro, or in fact, the EasyBook 3 L Pro, which is basically the same. So a 14.1 inch 1080p screen, six gigabytes of RAM, it has 64 gigabytes of eMMC 5.1 spec storage. And it has also a hatch and SSD slot underneath so you can expand upon that storage. Something that was brought in first with the EasyBook 3 Pro. The first model that came out later, they had quite a few revisions. Now those revisions kind of went a little bit sideways uh, with the jumper lately because there's some issues that crept up. So there was um, some lag on the keyboard, problems with the SSD slot. And luckily none of that is happening here with this F7 model. This really is fantastic laptop considering what you pay for this, you know, around about 250 US. It was as low as 219. So what we get is a full alloy build that's lightweight. This only weighs 1.3 kilos and it's only 13.5 millimeters thin. Metal lid, as you can see, and the palm rest is also made out of metal. Even the bezel around the screen, that's all alloy there, which is great. Now the keyboard on it is more or less about the same size as a Jumper EasyBook 3 Pros, but of course it's got this extra column here with the home page up, down and in keys. The power key there is next to the delete key. I wish it was actually separated away from the keyboard so you don't accidentally tap it, but typing on this keyboard, really good. It has hardly any flex. It's very firm, it's rock solid. Nice feedback from those keys. The keys just feel better than the EasyBook 3 Pros to type on. And I'm happy to report I have no issues with missed keystrokes or any keyboard lag. None of that is happening here with this keyboard, it's great. Now the touchpad also is rather large. As you can see, it has a smooth finish to it in silver paint job. It's not glass or anything like that. Like it's not a super premium touchpad but it is using Windows Precision drivers so you can control the gestures, it's accurate, and I really do like it. Now it does have incorporated mouse buttons in there, left and right, and they have a nice feel to them when you press down on them. It doesn't go down too deep either, they're not also too shallow, they seem just right to me, so overall quite good there. Now for ports on the right hand side here, sorry, the left hand side, We've got a micro HDMI out that supports up to 4K 30 Hertz. Status LED, which is red when charging, green once fully charged. Full sized USB 3 port, always need to have these, don't we, on laptops. And it will power external hard drives. I've tested up to four gigabytes without any problems. And then on the right hand side, we've got a micro SD card slot. Now this is only USB 2 spec, so don't bother about using or buying a really high spec card for that because you can't take advantage of the full speed of it. Another USB 3 port, then we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now this headphone jack actually outputs really good sound because it doesn't have the typical common interference and static that you often see and I hear so often on the Apollo Lakes and the Atoms. None of that, which is really good, but what it does sometimes exhibit is a little bit of popping. So when the sound card goes to sleep and then you play a sound, it'll wake up and about 50% of the time it will do a little pop, which is slightly annoying. Now that comes through also on the speakers. It's definitely related to the Realtek um, sound card that this has on here. And then of course the DC in there for charging 12 volts, two amps. Now up the top, we've got a 720p webcam, shoots up to 30 frames per second. The quality is actually better than the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro. Two microphones either side as well, so dual array. A little bit of hiss through these microphones, but I will give you a sample of that later on in this review. Now taking a look at that screen, so it's an IPS panel, 1080p. It's either anti-glare or glossy. My one's glossy. Now a lot of people in Twitter and other comments 
and even messages sent to me said, hey, you've got a screen protector on it, just remove it and it is anti-glare. Now that may be the case for some people. I actually went digging around here, lifted up the bezel, I used my knife to try and lift up this screen protector that I thought was on there and I scratched and damaged the surface of the glossy panel and damaged it a little bit, my bezel. So that's why my bezel looks like someone's attacked it with a knife because I did attack it with a knife. So if you cannot see any edges, you cannot see any dust or bubbles, you do not have a screen protector, it's a glossy display. So it's a lottery there whether you get anti-glare or glossy. I really wish it was anti-glare on my unit. Now the maximum brightness is only about 190 lux, which is not a lot, but it's perfectly fine for indoors. Right now with the bright studio lights on, I've got it set to about 70% and you can see it looks really bright. I normally just use it around 30 to 40% without any problems whatsoever. If you wanted to use it outdoors, that's when you'll run into problems. A reflective glossy screen is going to be a bit of a nightmare, so slap on an anti-glare screen protector. Now to comment on the whites, uh, they are quite neutral, they're leaning towards perhaps a little bit warm white, a lot better than the super cool white we have on the Jumper Easy Books 3 Pro screen, but that one is anti-glare which I tend to prefer. Now the blacks look good, nice and deep because it's a glossy display, it's IPS so viewing angles are perfectly fine, color reproduction looks good on this kind of screen considering the price, overall a very decent panel they have used in this. It's uh, made by Sharp as well, this panel that's in here. Quick peek now at the internals. So it's all positive here. Good news with the heatsink, it's very large. And as you can see later on with the thermals, that this does not run into thermal throttling. In fact, without any power limits, so it can use up to 15 watts, it doesn't overheat. It only gets up to 74 degrees Celsius maximum, which is pretty much unheard of. So Teclas have done an excellent job here, and it's really amazing because other laptops with the N3450 would end up getting up to about 80, 90 degrees without the power limits there. Now the SSD you can see here, you can actually install a 2260 here. There is room for it as long as you cut out this little plastic here. Use a Dremel or something, but once you put the SSD in place here, this is what's gonna happen. Uh, you'll have to cut out this as well so it'll lie nice and flat. When you put the rear lid back on, you will not be able to remove that SSD without removing the whole lid again. So you might run into a few little issues there with that, but to me it looks like you're going to be able to fit it. Now modders out there, if you wanted to put a thermal pad here, you could to transfer heat to the rear case there, and that would even lower temperatures by another 5 or 10 degrees even. There is metal behind the keyboard backing here, which is another positive. This is why the keyboard is so firm and doesn't really have any flex whatsoever. Now a lot of people are saying you can upgrade the RAM on this and that is normally never the case with the Sauron N3450s with the Apollo Lakes because there are no SODIMM slots in this so you cannot upgrade the RAM. Uh, you can only upgrade the RAM on the Saurons normally with just the mini PCs. Some of those do include SODIMM slots there so you can swap RAM or upgrade RAM but not the case here. But the internals, the layout, the build quality, everything does look good. They've got the plugs, everything taped in place so if you were to drop the laptop None of those plugs should pop out. So overall, yeah, it's looking very good. The internals are really good to me, and especially those thermals due to that copper heatsink. Now, if you want to really get maximum performance with literally no trade-off here, it doesn't overheat, I recommend going along into the advanced menu of the BIOS, go to CPU configuration, CPU power management, and long here, power limit one enabled will be set to nine watts, okay? so. Go along and change that from enabled to disabled and this is going to really boost up the performance. Now I know the screen is flickering like crazy but it's not doing that in person. Now so overall it feels quick and snappy this laptop here but these are a couple of benchmarks of run. So this is Geekbench 4, very good score. This is kind of the definitely one of the faster ones you will see out of the this chipset here, the N3450 with its quad cores. So that's really good. And right here is the OpenCL scores. That's testing out the integrated Intel 500 HD GPU that this has on here. Not a bad score as well, considering this integrated graphics. Now the wireless, I tested this out here. Now I know this isn't the best way to gauge the speed. I did use an FTP server at home and I managed to get close to 400 megabits per second. But this test I've run as well because there's a lot of networks around, a lot of interference, and 
My Xiaomi Mi Notebook Pro, with a much better chipset in it, can get around 300, so the full fiber speed I have here. Now I just wanted to point out the thermals because they are so good on the F7 here. They're crazy good considering I have disabled the power limit. So only 74 degrees maximum after six hours. This included two hours of non-stop gaming. It's hard to believe, but the copper heatsink does its job there so well on this. Really, really good. Most other laptops, even the EasyBook 3 Pro, if you disable the power limit on one that has it, uh, it'll climb up to almost 90 degrees after two hours of gaming. You need to do a copper heatsink mod and some thermal uh, pads in there as well just to help improve things. But you don't need to do any mods with this. Amazingly good. I don't know what really Tech Last have done there, but hats off to them. The thermals on this are so good. There's another test as well with the thermals. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, that's even lower there. So yeah, 74. It's not going to go past 74, at least my unit here that I have. Now, on to some battery life tests. Very important. Now, it does fall short of the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro. Right, right here, I did YouTube 1080p. And I lost, after two hours, 20%. So that's not bad. It looks like... You know, you're going to be able to get 9 or 10 hours of just straight streaming video. So it's very light use of the CPU. So I did later step things up in another day of testing. I cycled the battery, I think, four times in total with my testing here. And this is more what I would call real world use. So my own personal use, updating my website using Chrome with about 7 or 8 tabs, 30% brightness. And I'm looking at 6.5 hours. So this is short because the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro will be able to do seven to eight hours. Now the reason behind this is the power limit. So by default, they set nine watts. This test was with the default nine watts. Okay, so the stock configuration. That's why it's not getting the eight hours like the EasyBook 3 Pro, which has a lower setting. That's set to seven. So that's what uh, accounts for really the higher battery consumption, the, sorry, the higher power use is because of that. So if you're worried about that and you want to get eight hours, lower the power limit, and I think that will solve the problem there. But I'm happy for the trade-off. For the power you've got, extra power, I don't mind losing an hour battery life here with this. And this is the setting I had set in Windows, okay? So I've set it on the, not the best battery life tab, but this is the one up from it. So it's the latest version of Windows that I've been running on my SSD. And just to point out to uh, the SSD speeds, so perfectly fine. It's SATA 3, running at full SATA 3 speeds. My Kingspec 512 gigabyte SSD works perfectly fine, so no issues with that. USB 3 port speeds, running at maximum speed, no problems again. And the eMMC, it's... 5.1 spec, so a lot faster than the old 4.5 spec. Very good speeds here out of that SanDisk 64 gigabyte eMMC. So now I'm just going to test out a 4K clip here. So this is HEVC, 140 megabits per second, so quite a high bit rate. And you can see it's choppy, but only at the start. Once it gets past that, it's actually quite smooth. It's demanding file for this kind of hardware, but it handles it okay. And if you skip ahead, there's a little bit of a delay. Choppy for a little bit, then once it gets going, it'll smooth out again. So there we go. So it's good to see it can play these kind of files. Uh, VP9 codec support as well. And it's also just streaming at the same time here, 4K video. So that's a little bit demanding for it to be doing both of those things at the same time. Now, that's probably why it's got the drop frames. But it's doing okay here because this is Chrome, 4K, YouTube streaming, is normally a little bit choppy, but you see this is going perfectly fine, and that's down to that 9 watt TDP, the power limit that they set on this, which is really helping out. So the speakers on the F7, they're located just right here, so you don't see them, they're hidden away, and I do like this, the sound is transmitted and comes up, up this way here, and they do actually sound a little bit better, I feel, than the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro speakers. I'll give you a sample of them now.
So now a sample of the webcam, 720p, 30 frames per second. I'm recording the audio through those dual mics it has either side. And the quality of those mics I feel is really good considering the price of this laptop. And even the video quality, it's not bad. Okay, it looks a little bit pixelated, but it's perfectly fine for Skype calls and I've used it a few times and I've had no issues with it or the built-in microphones. Now moving on to have a look at a little bit of gaming. So this is League of Legends. Very light title. It's running in the native screen resolution, so 1080p, very low graphics preset. And we're getting close to 60 frames per second and even above 60 frames per second. So this is really good. This is just a bot game here, so two other bots and one on my team. But I'm really pleased with this performance. Remember, this is with the power limit disabled that I showed you at the start of the video. This is Project Cars. And as you can see, it's pretty laggy, only running at 18 frames per second, so that is not ideal. And I'm driving terrible. I wasn't even paying attention there. So games like this, the AAA titles, you know, you don't really want to be attempting to play them at all because it's kind of horrendous really trying to play with only 17 frames per second. This is on the lowest settings in 720p, by the way. But it's amazing just to show you that it's actually able to at least run the game and get these kind of frame rates. Now I would love to show you some Counter-Strike, but it's down the servers. There's something going on. I've been trying all afternoon without any luck whatsoever, so I can't do an online game. I can't even run a game against bots because it will come up with this error here. So if you set the resolution quite low and the settings on the lowest possible you're looking around 40 sometimes to 50 frames per second it does dip down to 30 and even below if there's lots and lots going on the performance isn't amazing but you can get away with playing a little bit of counter-strike on the side now it runs linux perfectly fine and one thing to note here with the screen i can actually capture it a lot better i'm not getting the flicker in linux which is a little strange so I don't know what is causing that. Something to do with the graphics drivers perhaps. So wireless works, the touchpad on the latest Manjaro 17.1.4 build that I'm running here does not work. So that's the only thing that's not working. Brightness controls, the um, sound, that all seems to be working just fine. It's just that the touchpad is the only issue in Linux. All right, so wrapping up this review here, it really is a fantastic laptop, especially if you pick this up for only 219. So look out for another flash sale. If not, I feel even the 250 price tag that I've seen it selling for at the time of when I posted this review, that's not actually too bad considering what you are getting, especially here in Spain. You compare that to what's available in the local market and they're all running still Cherry Trail Atoms. They've only got four gigabytes of RAM. They've got a plastic build, the keyboard, the touch pads are not precision ones. There's just so much to like about this. Now, the screen um, might get glossy, you might get an anti-glare screen, but to me, the screen is better than the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro. It's literally every single aspect of this is better, apart from battery life. So that's where you run into the con. So it's got about an hour's less battery life, but I believe the culprit is the higher power limit. So this thing here runs out of the box with nine watts power limit. And so that's a little bit more than the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro. So that's why it burns through the battery a little faster. But I feel that's a good trade-off because the performance of this is really good. It's fast. And I, in fact, disabled the power limit on here. So that means it's unlimited. Let's that CPU stretch its legs. It can use all the power it wants. It's only up to about 15 watts, I think, maximum combined with the integrated GPU and the CPU. So it doesn't even get hot. The thermals on this are amazing, really. They're so good. Techlast has done a really good job of this because they put a huge copper heatsink in there. It's quite big, a little bit bigger than what we normally see here, and it's just perfect. I mean, it doesn't go over 74 degrees after gaming with no power limit. It's kind of crazy good. That's I have never seen that before. This is the first time that's happened. Normally on other models, like the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro with no power limit, those temps will really start to creep up and hit close to 85 degrees, even 90, which is why I recommend you do a copper heatsink mod or put a thermal pad in there. You don't need to do that. So there is another couple of cons here. It's not perfect. Uh, the speaker does that pop noise, and it's a little annoying when that happens. 
but it's minor, very minor to me. And the other thing too I noticed, it could just be my unit, that when it's plugged in, 100% charged, put your ear down around this area, and you can hear a buzzing noise from the speaker, or it could even be coil wine or something coming from the CPU. It might be related to me having the power limit disabled, but I don't think it is. I think it's just static that comes through on the speakers there. Overall, fantastic laptop considering the price you're just getting so much here on offer now don't be confused about what the apollo lake can do people please because so many people have emailed saying can i edit 4k videos no <laughs> you can't not on this chipset i mean 1080p maybe this is a entry level kind of processor you have to remember that it's fanless uh, you can do quite a lot though, it will surprise people, you can open multiple tabs in Chrome, you can edit spreadsheets, you can watch 4K videos, um, HEVC codec files, VP9, it can play them, natively decode them, which is great, so you're not taking a huge performance hit, but you can't go and play Battlefield 1 on this. I don't know why some people seem to be fooled by, perhaps it's marketing or something, they show images of it playing the latest games from maybe, I don't think Techlast have done that, but a lot of other manufacturers do do that. So they put an image there of, of Battlefield 1 and people think, oh, I can play the latest AAA titles on a $200 laptop, no. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this review here of the best Apollo Lake laptop, that is the Techlast F7. And check out my review of the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro if you're interested in that, and my latest videos here. And also, please do think about subscribing if you like this kind of content and these videos that I produce. Bye for now.